Hey Fluffleheads, welcome back. This is Shiro Sagi, and I am back with my another attempt at Skinwalker, but this time I'm gonna try to get the good ending because the first time I played through it, I got the bad ending, which leads me to believe there's a good ending. So I want to find out what that fucking is. So I'm gonna speed through the dialogue because uh, I don't. It's basically probably gonna be the same thing unless it's different. If it's different, then I'll read and react and blah blah yada 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 bullshit. Anyway. The following story really happened. I saw it with my own eyes. We know. Maybe it didn't happen as I saw it, but more on that later. We were all going out camping, me and three friends from university. Darren, Celeste, and Michael. We don't need to meet them. We need to meet them again. Here's douchebag. Mr. Risky Pants. Risky McRisky. Uh-huh, blah, blah, blah. We already know. And there's my poor, sick female friend who's all fragile and innocent. Yep, blah, blah, blah. And there's boring old me. Boring old me who killed everybody in the last bad ending. And Kramer, I mean Michael, the guy who just busts into things and busts into my life and just became my friend. Great. So one day we decided, Darren decided that we are going to go camping like a bunch of fucking retards. Uh-huh, we're going to go in the forest. And we don't, we, uh, decide not to use the cabin because we want to be authentic. But then, this is the part where I go and find some water and firewood. I set out to gather wood for a new fire and water to cook with, and I'm going to hear some really strange noises, probably. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the opposite of what I did the last time I played and see what happens. Because the last time I made some choices and they turned out to be making me into a friend murderer. <laughs> what is that sound? It doesn't sound like something you'd hear in a forest. It's spoopy. It's the skinwalker making those creepy ass fucking noises and they need to stop that bullshit. That's some shit, man. The sound stopped. Yeah, I'm not being as dramatic with this reading because, uh, we, you know, I read all this already. It's all the same. Pour water in the cooking pot. Or I could try a little bit more drama for you. I should have enough wood to make the fire last a while tonight. Woo! Hey, there's enough wood for a fire, so let's talk to my friends. Hey, Celeste. Let's cook. You cook because you're the woman. I already used that joke. Later that evening... Let's gather round campfire and sing our campfire song. Yes, I know I sang this in the other attempt at this game. <laughs> it's time to get some sleep soon because we're all out of booze. Guess we have to go back to town tomorrow. You know, it's not fun unless we're drunk off our fucking ass. I'm not looking forward to that four hour walk. We shouldn't have gone so deep in. <laughs> no. Oh, 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 Michael, you're a fucking genius. I, I can't believe you came up with that idea, or those thoughts. I could have never thought that by myself. What the hell is up with this fog? Because it's scary type, it's a horror game. That's why. Every time I've been here before, there's never been a fog. Well, first time for everything. It's called nature. How often are you really out here, man? It's really chilly. It's the sound. The soundy sound that sounds soundy. That makes no sense. Yeah, now that you mention it, what is that? It sounds like something metally. Metally? <laughs> is that even a word? It is because I say it is, you fucking retard cunt. <laughs> it's a word if I say so. That's, you know, that, you tell them. Alright, let's all go to sleep. I think we all go to sleep in the tent. It was a machine. The craziest machine in the middle of fucking bumfuck Egypt. No one's using a chain. It doesn't sound like a fucking chainsaw, you stupid fuck. <laughs> I'm sure that was no chainsaw. Yeah, that didn't sound like very chainsaw-like to me. I wonder what it was. It's the hash sling slasher. We all went to sleep. But I woke up. It's something woke you up a few hours later in your half-wake sleep. Ooh. You stumbled outside the tent. 
Alright, time to go exploring. Where I really shouldn't. Theron? Michael? Celeste? Is that you? And this is even thicker than before, and I can't see much. Because we're about to see the skinwalker dude, old man. I'm trying to make light of the situation, because it's doing me a frightened. You're doing me a big frightened. Dun dun dun! Hey, fucker. Sup? Michael, is that you? <laughs> no, bitch. <laughs> Say something, will you? Who are you? I'm gonna, I'm gonna run, 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 run. Stop right there! I have a knife. Well, he runs back on his own. Why can't I run? Shit! I'm running like fucking hell. Yeah, I don't like that noise. It's actually very disturbing. Even though this is like. Not this, this is more of a story scare than a jump scare. The music's pretty disturbing. But that sound, I won't lie. <laughs> hey, wake up, there's something outside the tent. What? Uh, I'm sure there is. Lots of squirrels and shit. Go back to sleep. Hey, is Michael here? Mm, yeah, I'm here. Why wouldn't I be? Because there's a fucker outside that looks just like you. It was probably some animal. I don't think you have to worry about a fox or whatever. There ain't no fucking fox. Take it easy and go back to sleep. Well, alright, then maybe it was some animal. But the sounds are not like anything I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Alright, so we're gonna start making some different choices soon. <laughs> Ugh. Motherfucker, don't laugh. Ah! <laughs> And then selling any of our voices. Yeah, should we go outside and look? Well, if it's some crazy psycho with an axe, this is the same dialogue as before. All the more reason to check it out. Yep, this is the same dialogue as the last one. Okay, everyone get together and check it out. Yep, same dialogue. The real changes come, I guess, when we're running away from it. Because they give you the option to hold her hand or not. What the heck is that? It's a thing. Something was... It, it's a dead animal. It's a gift. <laughs> okay, it'll be fine. Everything will be fine. What if the dude got some kind of weapon with him? I mean, he killed this little critter, didn't he? You could have killed a squirrel with a fucking stick. It doesn't take a weapon. I mean, like it's a, it looks like a, a mess, but it probably was like a rabbit or something. But we gotta leave. What about our stuff? Yeah, screw our stuff. I, would, I wouldn't give a shit about our stuff. Stuff is replaceable and your life is not. Alright, so yeah, we're not going back to bed here. We're getting the fuck out. Excellent. A few minutes later. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Let's go. Let's get the fuck out of here. Because this is no good. This is no good at all. Mm -mm -mm. Alright, we're getting out. Soon, okay, it's so dark. This is gonna be the part where I start making different choices. The fog is really annoying. Same dialogue. So we're going back to the cabin. That's the plan. That's the only choice I could. That's really the only thing I could think of doing either. Okay. It's following you. <laughs> it's made a creepy, creepy pants. All right. A while later, it became obvious Darren had no idea where we were going. He was swearing and looking all around. We've been walking for an awfully long time now. Are you sure we're on the right path? I've walked this path hundreds of times We're on the right path. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I don't recognize anything from when we were walking to the camp. I said we are on the right path. Okay, yeah, that's the same dialogue. But as time went on, it became obvious that we had no idea where we were. He couldn't find the path. Maybe it was the fog, maybe the darkness, or maybe something else. 
Either way, we were lost. I kept looking behind me. I was having that feeling that you think something is watching or stalking you. I nearly tripped over Celeste when she fell. Help Celeste up? No, that is the opposite of what we did last time. She shook her head and got to her feet. The ground was getting muddy. It was getting even mistier. If not for the flashlight, I wouldn't have any idea who she was. I recognize that tree. We're getting to the cabin. Again, I had the feeling that something was watching me. My gut was screaming at me that something, somewhere, was wrong. I realized the sound from earlier was back, softer, but still present. I started looking around, panicking. I did a head count, or more accurately, a silhouette count. Me, Celeste walking beside me. Darren in the lead, and Michael to the left. Who the heck was the guy besides Michael? I quickened my pace. I thought about shouting out, but it was but was worried. If it if I did, maybe the thing would turn around and jump Michael or something. This is the same dialogue. I didn't know what to do. I ran my fingers along a knife I brought from the camp. Then the cabin appeared out of nowhere. The mist was starting to disintegrate around us. It was easier to make out who everyone he was now. I looked at the thing next to Michael. She looked just like Celeste. The thing next to me leaned in front of me. Oh, it's going to jump scare me. It wasn't Celeste. <sighs> it's that ugly looking fucking thing. Oh, that's nasty looking. I should have ran or screamed, but my body was clenching up for no reason. The thing turned and walked into the mist. I didn't help it up. <laughs> I caught up with the others as they entered the cabin practically in tears. They couldn't find the car and were arguing about where we put it. I told them what I saw. Obviously, they didn't believe me. Still, everyone hurried inside and locked the door. Ugh. He followed us here. He really wants something from us. What the hell does he want for it with us? Someone get the shotgun. Well, what? Oh, that's different. That's new. That's new dialogue. Get the shotgun. Shit. Well, I didn't know there was a shotgun. Now I know where the shotgun's from. Shoot, he'll kill us. Shoot him. Huh? What? Shoot. Shoot now. Ooh. Nobody said a word for what felt like an hour. Finally, Michael slowly walked toward the door and opened it. What they saw sent them all into shock. Ugh. It was Joe. Me. The Joe inside the cabin started laughing. Silently at first, and louder and louder until everyone had to cover their ears. That was when everyone realized they made a mistake. The Joe outside the door was the real Joe. Why? I thought I got the good end. What the fuck? I got another bad end. Oh, it's a different bad end. <laughs> well, this has been the second bad end of Skinwalker. If you liked the video, if you liked the little series I'm doing for it, hop it over to that like button and give it a little bunny nudge for me. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.